morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? This is Strider Prime, bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models. And I have to say, Happy Easter to everybody who is on my channel. Well, whoever's watching right now. Uh, hope everyone is having a great day. Um, just give me a few moments here. I'm kind of like in the middle of something. There we go. So, I know everyone is probably on their way to church or getting ready to go to church, you know. And, uh, and or getting ready to go visit families and friends, seeing loved ones. For me, I'm just cleaning up a few things here and there. I have a bit of a mess on this table because I was doing a few things. Still working on the Dom. That's taking up a lot of time. Hopefully I shall have a video by the by this week. I have a few things that I purchased that I wanted to show off, but so let me talk to you guys first and say, you know, happy Easter to everyone. I hope everybody's, you know, doing okay. You know, today is the 4th of August, of April. And supposedly, if um, IPMS would have still had their, um, would have still had their um, mosquito con, it's always usually, at the it's always the first Saturday of the month that they have mosquito con. So mosquito con would have been yesterday. Which would have been nice to go. Unfortunately, they schedule it for the 31st of July. So I have a lot of time to build what I have and bring it to the show. Just reviewing some parts here. That's a point, uh, 2.5 millimeter photo etch parts. This was a Gigan pin that was given to me by True Gunpla. I should have put this on when I went to see Godzilla versus King Kong versus Kong. As a matter of fact, I have where's Goji? I had Goji somewhere in here. Goji, oh there you go. This is my SH Monster it's Godzilla. Been thinking of maybe getting the SH Monster Arts Godzilla um, 2021 version, which is going to come out you know, in the summertime. Um, you know, put you there, stay there, Goji. This was 2014 version, by the way. Put all these parts, put this to the side. Some scribing tools that I'll definitely need. For this, when I work on the Dom. By the way, I don't know if anybody can hear me. So, this is actually um, plastic sanding needles. This is good for like sanding curvature or anything like that. This was given to me by Clem when I went to see when I went to go to um, the the um, oh I forgot Otacon in uh, in Baltimore. So it was good. That he gave me this. Those guys, um, those kind of guys, haven't been doing any videos lately on their YouTube channel. It's kind of fun to watch them um, talk and build and have fun. I know, obviously, with the pandemic, it makes it very difficult. And scheduling-wise, it's very tough for everybody. I picked this up at Barnes and Noble. 
the um, final fine scale modeler um, issue, April issue, which I'm going to review in a moment. I also picked up the Space Marine Heroes. It was three dollars, plus with ten percent off. Got it down to like maybe two third two eighty or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna build this in a moment. Then I went to a place called Little Japan, that was at a, a, a you know an Asian mall here in New Jersey, and I picked this guy up for how much? Twelve ninety nine. The Gundam artifacts. I've been meaning to get these guys for a while. Uh, I missed my opportunity, but I saw it at the, at the store and I said, oh, let me pick one up. And this is the Nightingale version. I'm going to do a re I'm not building this now. I want to build it and, and paint it, but that's going to be for a later video. But uh, yeah, they, they had all of these guys, but I decided to go for this one. So yeah, I've been been working on the Don. You know, when you change something on a kit and you break it down, and then you try to make something new, I, I'm kind of like I'm now having like I think builder's block where I say, wait a minute, where do I go from here? Do I do this? Do I do that? And that's where I'm uh, at a point where I'm stuck. I know what to do. I'm just maybe hesitant to do it, but I want to try it. Um, I don't want to show it off now. This will be something that I will prepare for you guys to see. But yeah, I, I guess uh, I'm now like second guessing myself.
Okay. I don't know what happened, but my computer froze on me, and I was like, what the heck is going on here? I'm waiting for it to refresh itself on my screen so I could see what's going on. Come on, refresh. Am I still going? Yep, there I am. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Something must have happened where it just crashed on me. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so let's go back to it. I was actually talking about the magazine right here. So let's review this again. So we have a MRC's review or advertisement for the new tooling of the Osprey 148 scale. Has some really, really cool details here. I see some evergreen. I see some. I see evergreens. I have um, advertisement for more um, styrene sheets here. Nice little build there of a plane. Let's see the new product lines. Fock Wolf right there. Airfix is King Tiger. Mm, interesting. And M3 Grant and 12G. Okay, so these two could be new toolings at 135 scale. And then we have a I don't know, from mini art, there's a tank right there. Mini arts. Looks like this is a slow month for kids. British Destroyer by IBG. Some cards. Another stuff here. Remarking a Lend Lease Air Cobra. Hmm. I remember reading the history of the Air Cobra. It was the uh, first aircraft to actually use a 37 millimeter cannon in the nose. Basically, you're putting in an a small artillery piece on this aircraft. It has, I, I think these are two 30, 30 caliber machine guns, or it could be two 50s. But yeah. And then, of course. During the Lend Lease program during the war, they gave 200 air cobras to Russia. This was at a time where I guess their air power was not not strong enough to go up against the Luftwaffe until the uh, until the Yak fighters were introduced, and then the other aircraft. Ah, uh, there can only be one Highlander. Nice. Corsair. I've seen some good model kits of the Corsair. The last Corsair I built a long time ago was actually a, a, to me, um, a Ravel Corsair, but it was a cheapy one, like about 20, like 10 bucks. Very, very basic build, nothing crazy. Of course, this one, what brand is this? This is a. Oh, it's a Hasegawa. This is a Hasegawa. Yeah, Hasegawa will have a crazy amount of detail. Even though you don't see it, it's there. Well, it's really cool to see, you know, putting on the markings and the painting. It feels very basic. Uh, armored on rails, that's cool. Tanks basically on train tracks. The camel and weathering is very nice to see that. And then uh, I got to figure out the chipping. See, I know that you guys are thinking this is not Gundam, but this is actually good to see something like this because then you can get applied onto a Gundam kit, especially for weathering. 
Uh, and of course, yes, many people will say, oh, you can look it up online. Sometimes you need to unplug and, you know, take a good magazine, just sit there, review it. Because sometimes you can't, looking at a screen 24 hours a day is not a good thing. Not a good thing. One of the best starfighters in the galaxy. My opinion on that. This is a nice white window. But a very good diorama build. It, clearly, this is the Bandai one. Yeah, 170 seconds ago, Bandai. And, this, and Bandai has, like, insane amount of detail. And as you can see, he was cutting it up in pieces so it can be a sectional type section. Um, it's actually really nice what he did right there. All the washes and things like that. Using a fine brush. That's actually really nice. Look at the weathering and the scorch marks. That's another thing. You don't normally see that many Gundam kits with scorch marks. Um, how can you put a scorch mark on a Gundam? Let's, let's figure that out. I mean, if I take something like this, right? You take something like this. Would, be, would there be a scorch mark on the barrel of a bazooka? Maybe a little bit of scarring there there's no scarring on the beam rifle because the beam rifles chrome and metallic form you know doesn't show that unless you do a little light chipping um thrusters could be a good way of scorch mark because in that way if the thrusters are not pointing in this direction it could be accidentally burning this here during flight same hold true for something like this here in the bottom legs. So if somebody opened this up and then the thrusters come out, you know, the, the, the flames come out, you can have scorch markings here. I have not seen nobody do that. Maybe they have, and it's so subtle you don't normally see that. Another point would be like scorch marks here on the Vulcans. You don't see that or anybody work on something like that. You have to find what's appropriate that will have something like that based on, on, on what robot or what mat moles that you're using. You don't see scorch marks on, on, a, on, a, on a seed kit because it's all, you know, energy. Well, no, I said they're wrong. On a double O kit, a double O kit will not show any scorch marks at all because they're using energy. You don't see that many um, um, projectile weaponry because that, scorch marks will only come out from thrusters or impact or basically, um, um, yeah, projectile weaponry. Missiles doesn't count. So where to incorporate scorch marks on a Gundam? That's very difficult to figure out. Now, I really like the diorama base that this guy has done. Um, I see he used foam up to here, and then he made a custom um, platform. He painted it in all these colors, gave it more detail using extra parts and things like that. That's actually really nice. I would love to do something like this. He masked it off. Clearly, he hand he, he hand painted it and weathered it using the uh, using um, mark, you know, pencils. Also, never underestimate pencils. And then the final form right there. What is this? Use beads. Beads for one. Oh, I don't think that was it. All right, so now this is Reader's Gallery. We have a nice little um, Corsair right there. I saw, I saw this vehicle. And I know it's from that weird movie, Wandering Earth. But this is actually a really nice model kit. I love that. And I was going to get it, but it was like, the kit was like relatively almost this big, and it was like $50. And I was like, ah, that's a little too much for my taste. Here's Groot. I didn't know that was a model for Groot. One-fourth scale, 3D printed. Oh, it's a 3D printed Groot. Okay. Then we have a 148 scale uh, Gorman F4, er, F14A and a... Paladin, art, mobile artillery. Uh, nice car. 
right there. This is actually a Chaparral 2D 2C. Well, this one is a Hell Diver float plane. Nice little custom mummy. All right, now here we go. So there's another thing that you don't know that's very difficult to do. And I, I've seen people try this and I try to do it myself is basically putting rust on cars it's, or rust on anything. There, there's, oh, he's using the chipping of it with, oh, using the salt. So basically spraying the, the under color tone, which would be the, the rust color, then getting the salt and then priming it with applying water and then applying the salt over it and then painting it the next color and then using um, uh, water, so using water after it dries, you can then remove the salt particles and then you have the rust on it. And then you have more detail on this and it's amazing. Yes. Oh, I see. He has resin engine right there. Yeah, that's actually amazing. Yo, happy Easter to you too, man. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just uh, enjoying some coffee, reviewing some magazines. Yeah, I'm going to open up something here. Just talking. Just talking. little warship. This is a 1350 scale USS San Francisco CA-38. A heavy cruiser from 1939. And this is from Trumpeter. Pretty much Trumpeter dominates all the um, massive uh, model ships. Pretty big though. I've been, I've been itching to build another ship yet. As a matter of fact, I have something that I'll show you guys in a moment. I think I've showed you this before, but I've been meaning to get to it in a moment. So here's how the he works on the ship. The railings, that's another thing, the railings. Uh, this is something that I've been, I mean, I've been working with photo edge parts. This is technically photo edge parts. Don't know if I'm going to do that, if I buy, build a model ship, but I don't have any railings for any of the model ships that I purchased that I have in, my, in, my, in storage. As a matter of fact, I have one, I have two model ships nearby. Let me pull it out. I have this one, the USS Mount Whitney LCC-20. It's one 700 scale. Let's open it up for a second. I was actually prepping for this. This is a missile um, support command ship. Good detail, a lot of small parts. Um, does this come with a helicopter? I didn't tell. Um, no, it doesn't come with that. I don't know, it doesn't come with uh, an aircraft. Yeah, I gotta take the manual. Or maybe there's another, oh, there's another one here. Okay. So we have the de decals there. We have uh, the flight deck, the main deck. There's some more parts here. Then we have the actual bottom of the ship. Riza, Riza ZZ, thank you very much. Thank you. So you see, like a ship like this, it has a lot of detail here, but it doesn't show anything in reference to railing. So would I get railings for this ship? But I would have to find out if they make custom railings or railing, or do I have to get something that's similar to this? This is an actual old old kit that I purchased. Yeah, this thing doesn't come with aircraft. I know it's a, it is like that. Yeah, so there's no railings anywhere. That doesn't mean I can't put any railings on this. But we'll see. So see, this is one ship that I have. 
another one I had that, that I've had for a while. And this one I got on, on, on a, a, a deal was this one, this Japanese, uh, J- Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Um, Shimo, Shimokita. This is a landing ship tank. What would you call it? Landing ship tank, or is it land, landing ship transport? I was working on this a long, a long time ago, and it's actually a very small kit. Look how small it is for one seven hundred scale. Somebody actually, I purchased this from somebody who actually painted this. And here's the flight deck. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think this is the flight deck. It's all. Here are all the little vehicles that you can build. You hand painted them. Here's the um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the hy- uh, hydrofoil vehicle. There, there's a Chinook right there. Yeah. Somebody already did this. There's a, there's a see here? Okay, there's an aircraft. There's a ship right there. Yeah, this guy did a lot of work. And I know this one comes with photo which this one you have to get photo which parts made i don't know so i'm trying to like work my way into actually building something like this and it comes i believe it comes with a dock so this is what it would look like so you have you have your helicopter pad right there you have all the tanks vehicles there's a crane i think that's an artillery piece or a crane i don't know um, you only have two helicopters, and then you have two LCACs, and then two um, hydrofoil boats, one waterlined, one without waterline, and this can be waterlined. Okay, here, here are the, um, the actual vehicles right here. So you have... You have Three types of tanks, one uh, two, uh, an artillery piece. You have the support vehicles, a trailer, uh, armored vehicles, more light armored vehicles, and jeeps and trucks and all that stuff. And that's cushion mooring for the dock. Oh wow, that's actually neat. And then you have this ship with the with the uh, all that. And then you have two versions of this. You have one that's flattened down and when you have one that's already like up to go up in the water i'll have to do i have to work on this this is actually i mean somebody did this try to do this and didn't finish it up but yeah it, this is actually a nice kit i've been meaning to buy another ship kit but i have already two not here and i have it in storage so i can easily pull it up if i do Sorry if I'm deviating. Go back to this magazine. Um, But this is actually really nice. Oh, this is, is this Russian? Hold on a second. Is this a Russian ship? Because I'm I'm seeing a Russian helicopter. Is it Russian? Give me a second. Now I have to read, go back to the beginning of this. Up a warship. Well, that, that's actually. Oh, this is in reference to finishing up a warship because he's actually talking about how to detail it. Okay, so it's not like referring to that one, it's referring to everything else. Because here, that's a Russian ship right there. So even though that's a Russian ship, that's actually a, a US ship. I like those float planes. That's a lot of work with that. Eduardo Spitfire Mark II dual combo. So you have two Spitfires. If anybody wants to build a plane, like if somebody asks me, what would be an easy plane to build? Or what would be a starter plane? Find yourself a Ravel um, Spitfire. Either Ravel or Tesla. If you see a Spitfire, just build it. It's, it's a simple kit. It's very easy. It's nice and pretty. Easy to work with. Oh, I've seen this a lot. The the turreted uh, model kits, and this one's the the turreted uh, Yamato turret number one. 
This is tech 170 second scale. 170. So that's pretty much almost the size of this magazine. Ridiculous. But that's kind of cool. Though. advertisements, some local shop directories, Super Brother built Super Sonic Jump. That's actually really nice. And then here are the AK paints. Very, very, you know, a very limited magazine. Not too much stuff. Uh, Tamiya, uh, the Aust F, Panzer Kaffa Wagon 4. Is that a new tooling or? No. So yeah, that's the end of this magazine. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, are these photo edge parts? Not for it. Um, describing tool, uh, describings, which uh, looks pretty nice. I don't know if we've used them yet for, but I'll figure it out soon enough. Open this up. So by the way, I got this at Barnes and Noble when I went to go, um, I went to go to Wayne, New Jersey, to give one of the kits to the people who won um, the um, giveaway last Friday. No, not this past Friday, the Friday before. So that was actually on my birthday, where I did the um, St. Jude's uh, Children's Fund. Which now it's over, and we have raised up to three hundred and five dollars for donation. I like to extend my thank you to everyone who contributed to this. I really appreciate it. That you know, for me, this was the best Chris, uh, birthday gift ever to give to somebody else. You know, and thank you again. I really appreciate it. So I went to Barnes and Noble, and I saw this, and I said, "Let me get this." This is actually model kit right here. Look at that. So you get like a playing card right here. Brother Elvis, Elvis, with its uh, 12, uh, 12 pack missile pack there. Where is my, I think, can I use this? Let's use this one now. I admire the um, the people who make Warhammer kits. Um, that's a breed on its own, but I will never see myself going into that because that's a little too much. All right, so I see we get two heads here, two different variant of heads. Let's, uh, oop, almost cut that off. Bolters. This needs to looks looks like it needs to be sanded down, but all right. Then we have these two parts that go here and here.
Yes, it is awesome. It is very awesome, you go. All right, so we have the we have two types of heads. We have the screaming head guy, but I'm you know what? This is the one thing. This is the reasons why I never get into Warhammer. I'm good with painting armor and equipment, and I am not very good with flesh. Never have, never will be. So I'm gonna put the helmet on this guy. And then we have this part here that goes right on top of that. There we go. And then we have this part that goes here. And here. Very, very limited pose on the arms, but that's okay. And then, oops. No, I'm not. Sorry. I'm not into that. That's. I'll leave that to you, Miguel. Not me. Okay. One thing is that once it goes in, it will never come out. And I broke it. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, that's why I bought Clue. Actually, give me, I'm gonna use the thicker glue. One of the best glues out there. <laughs> there we go. All right, let me just hold it there. Your house sounds very lively. With them birds, I, yeah, I have the window open right now. It's uh, weather is now starting to change a bit here. It's nice. I like it. That's the one thing that I remember that I well that I did not have in my old house was I didn't have the ability to open my window. All right, that's done. This guy right here. Oops. There he goes. Focus, goddammit. Come on, focus. There we go. There we go. Look at that. I mean, this is pretty simple to paint. I mean, all red with a little bit of gray. I'm gonna try to hand paint this if I can. If I can. There we go. Uh, let me go get more, get something else. Hang on. this little guy right here. I was actually thinking of doing it last night, 
while I was watching the Ten Commandments. But then, you know, I get phone calls coming in and couldn't do anything. Before I start on this, I was at Richfield Hobbies. I want to say hi to uh, to Jimmy over there, but he, he already left. Couldn't see him. Got myself more of the Microset paint um, decal. These are good decals. <laughs> Hello, Steve. How you doing? Thank you for, uh, for happy, you know, happy Easter. So I got that. I also got some styrene sheets. These are um, 1.5 by 3, 6.3 millimeter strips. There's reasons why I get this, but, you know. And even though he had Gundam kits over there, but some of them I didn't think of getting. When I saw this, I said, you know what? I'm getting this. I got the Zuda. I got the Zuda. Now, normally I don't buy a kit like this at this price of $35. But one, I support Jimmy's store because he, he's the only one here in Richfield. So if anybody was in the Richfield area, please stop by and say hi. Tell them Johanny sent you. You know, the starter prime guy. But the reason why I got it is because I didn't realize this thing has this gun. And I thought it didn't. But it does. And there it is. Oh, I want to build this. But not now, unfortunately. So, something to look forward to. Let me see this guy. Oh. Well, that's one solid part that it was a glued. Don't remember that. Purposes. Oh, it is a solid part. Okay. Ooh, those guns look weird. But we're building this. Let's get rid of the guns out there. So I actually purchased this Yamato kit. It was actually really like maybe 12 bucks or 15 bucks. I got it from Hobby Link Japan a few years ago. In and at the time when I was making the um, the little small diorama ship, and I, I was saying to myself, I want I want to continue doing it again to give it a to give it a try with the uh, diorama, uh, the C diorama, you could say. Trying to get my my get more experience in doing something like that because that other ship that you saw the mount whitney one that that kid is uh, I'm, i want to try making what making it for mosquito mosquito con um but it all depends on you know what i can do with okay so if anybody has actually i've been meaning to jump on world of warships there's no code here Surprisingly, and this is all in Russia, Russian. So I can't, this, I can't, you know, decipher this. So, a nice little pamphlet. Where 
is my other one. It's too early in the morning to drink, unfortunately. Where is my knife? shaving off some of this excess um, flash that's on it. Let's clean it up a bit. It's interesting that you think that after years of, mo of um, research and development and model kits, the, the issues with flash would have been resolved by now, but I, I think I understand the purpose of this because you build you're not building a kit you're not you're not molding a kit to be um to be the best out there depending you know the you're not gonna put it up in competition something like this this is just basically you know something to build and and have around and all that stuff great for for scratch building great for practicing. If you if you never build a, a model ship, you know you can say, "Oh, I'll, I'll build this one and see how it feels." So I don't expect that much for this kit. I mean, somebody will call will think, "Oh, you know what? I, I have metal parts, very small, that will simulate uh, scratch building, or I have these parts that will work with this." So for a company to not remove not do its work. There's there's various reasons why. Yeah, it's all as Miguel is saying right now. It's all about fast production. It's all about getting it out there to the customers. You know, building it, uh, making it in mass. There was a um, just a guy who I follow on YouTube. He goes by the name of Max's Models. He, he's an older gentleman who does reviews of model kits. He did a great um, series of document documentaries, you could say, his own version of documentaries of companies where they began from its early beginnings up till now, companies that were popular back in the day but are no longer existent, or they've been, um, how can I say, been uh, bought over by, by takeovers or things like that. He did a comparison of, well, am I going to see this? So that's seven. So, okay. One. I need both, all of them. He did a comparison of two types of aircrafts, the um, P-51 Mustang, 172nd scale. He used the, I believe, the Revell and the Tester. Or no, the um, Tamiya. The Ravel was at around twenty dollars, while the Tamiya one was close to forty. So you have great detail versus semi detail. But then, like Miguel said, it's all about the production, the quality of the production right there. And both aircraft, he paint, he built it, he painted it. It looked great, but you could see. Oh, that was hard to You can see the deep how much better detail and options you get from the te from the Tamiya kit than what you get on a Ravel kit. Uh, Ravel is not going to spend a lot of money on a 172nd scale kit just to have that extra detail or that extra option parts. I mean, they'll do it, but it'll be for an, a much more higher price range. This is This is pretty much the same on every kit out there every scale out there you have your you have your cheap mass produced kit version and then you have your high quality limited run advanced unit i mean a better comparison is of the the you know you get a high grade gundam 
in a real great company, you know where, what you're getting. You're getting something of quality while you get something that's simple and easy. And if you want more easy, then you have the entry grade companies. Ah, this thing is tough to push in. It almost feels like it's snack fit. Get in there. I don't want to break it. Yeah, it, it, it's near snap fit, but I'm, I'm gluing it on just in case. Where's that little quad part that I just removed? There it is. this but there's extra let's, see, let's put that on there there's other model builders that I follow on YouTube uh, there's a guy named Sk there's a one called skeleton he does some great ship model kits. Some he does some other kits as well. But he, it was his channel that I I watched that showed off his uh, his techniques of the um, o, you know custom ocean diorama. That's where I got the idea from him. Um, there's another guy which right now escapes my mind, and I don't want to deviate my. Let me see if I could find him. He is. History. So I said skeleton. Oh, look up, look up another uh, YouTube channel called uh, uh, the Story. Uh, the, it's called the Story, but he's always it's called the Coup or the Co. Uh, guy does some great video uh, documentary and reviews of people building some great kits. So that was actually a good one right there. Stetson, scale model aircraft. Look up that guy. He does some great work on that as well. If anybody has some um, some great model builder videos that you can recommend, please share it on this uh, on this video. Um, Jay Stewart Double O, thank you very much. Happy Easter to you too. What do you think of the Vallejo Mecca colors? I think they are pieces of shit. <laughs> um, I've had bad to very very bad to i don't know what the hell am i doing experience with it um granted it's it's subjective many people are telling me that it could be my airbrush because the vallejo paints require you to have a higher um a larger uh, nozzle on the airbrush and unfortunately all my nozzles are, on my airbrushes are point three five point zero three point three five or point zero three five it's very very narrow so for me to get to invest in an airbrush that's point five or larger just to get a mecha color paint and i'm not i'm not doing it uh, i'm not doing it at all i think um uh, I have too many paints, and for me to jump onto another brand, um, 
is not for me. Get it. I just glued it on right now and it'll leave that a bit. Putting up this thing is tough. So far, so good. All right, so now we'll go to the deck. This model has a lot of guns. Got them all. You know what? Let me see if we can put them on without. Uh, let me see here. Scuffle, happy Easter to you too. Gotta run, make lunch. No problem, man. Thank you very much. I hope you and your family have a great Easter. Um, Strider stream, perfect for Easter. <laughs> yes, how you doing, Dustin? Thank you very much. Happy Easter to you too. Happy Easter to you, uh, Lawson. Thank you very much. Hope you guys have a great uh, holiday. Just take it easy, be safe, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. All right, this one's a little loosey goosey, so let me just. I'm gonna put glue on this. So last night, I was talking to Prime92, who just finished doing her stream. She was messaging me, and I missed it because I was taking care of a few things. And I said to her, well, why didn't you invite me in your stream? She did not know how to do that on her channel. Granted, this was, uh, I think this is one of the few times that she has done this. I've been slowly convincing her, hey, we should do a live stream together. We haven't done one in a long time. We did some, you know, but... Uh, you got to give her some time. She's 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 opening up to new things, you know. Granted, if you get a few drinks in her, you can get her to do a lot of things. But that's a conversation for another day. Let's see here. Uh, do you have any? Do you have ever built any Zoids? No, and I don't plan to. I purchased a Zoid a while back and I gave it away. I think I have one put away in storage, but I don't know where it is. Um, I don't plan on building one or getting one. Unless someone gives it to me for free. <laughs> Sorry to say that. You know what? These holes are too tight and I don't want to actually damage what I just put on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape this off. Look guys, you and Brandon did back in the day were really fun to listen to. Yes, I know. We had some good times. Yeah. There we go. Now it's nice and tight. Like my ex-girlfriend. All right, now uh, we have two parts here. Oh, we get two little boats. Is it boat? Yes, but this one I'll peel off like that. So I gotta get this done because I'm also have to get myself ready for going out and enjoying the day. Let me just remove some of the excess flash on this one too. Wait a minute, is that part of the build? Oh no, it's actually it's actually completely flash. All right. You know, 
I just realized this. This is actually a water line. I didn't. I didn't thought there was a uh, another hole below that, but no, it isn't. So we go there. All right. So let's move that. Oh, there's a flash there. That's actually very hard to remove. Have we ever met in person, me and Prime Navy 2? Nope. Um, there was a time where I thought, eh, you know what, maybe one day I'll go to Canada. Um, but I never got around to it. So, no, we never got a chance to. We never got a chance to. Uh, the boat goes that way. Ah! So, while you guys are watching this, have you guys ever built any other kits besides Gundam? Uh, any model kits you guys want to share? Have you built a ship? Have you built a tank? Have you built a boat? Which is basically the same thing. Uh, a, a jet, a plane, a car. Sure, please. Just let me know. All right, so we're going to put these guys. There, I didn't remove it. Let me see. No, no, I did remove it. Oh, you know what? We're, we're cutting it up. And then I'm going to put glue right around that area. Because there was something here that was like saying, nope, I'm not letting you through. But if I do this and hold it down, now it's nice. All right. Uh, I built two Zoids, a few car models, two Ava units, and a few planes. Cool. There we go. Nice little Yamato. Then we have the guns. Didn't realize this. There were... Wait a minute. Oh, I cut a lot of guns off. So we have two... We have the one with the, with the machine gun. Okay. Yeah, because the Yamato was basically um, three guns. I see that there's two variants. I'm not using this little wonky guy. So this one goes on the top. This one goes on the bottom.
Uh, that's not going in because there may be something stuck in this house and excess fly or something on this one. Uh, too loose. Okay. And then for this one. It's a little too loose. Mm. Mm. One is actually hitting the other. Oh. I'm going to do a little bit of a press here just to make sure that the glue sets in. There we go. Two more guns and we're done. Oh, we also have to forget the, the little airplane. Let me see what I say. And two Digimon kits from Bandai. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have to say that the Digimon kits look really nice. I've been following um, me and Prime and another friend have been watching the uh, Digimon uh, series for quite some time. We have, we, I think we're, we haven't been caught up yet. We missed a few episodes, so. Oh, don't break that. Give me that little plane. Give me the plane. Okay. All right, that completes that. That goes into the garbage. I'm going to have to say that this is actually technically my first Yamato non-sci-fi version kit that I've ever built. I've never built a Yamato kit before. I built the 21, 2199, the, uh, the uh, original Yamato kits from, from, the, from the 70s and 80s. Yeah, I did those guys, but I've never built uh, an actual... Japanese worship. Let's put the glue on for the little planes, the float planes. And then the last part. Okay. Make sure these things are sealed so they don't fall off and, and screw up all the paint jobs. No decals on this. This is just basically a straight build. And since this is from the from this kit line, there's no there's no code for you to play the World of Worship game, which is based out of this. There you go. Yamato. And Warhammer. Let me see here. Uh, I pretty much built kits since I was five or six, but there were huge gaps of when I was I didn't build anything. That yeah, the same thing for me. I um I built I started building when I think I was seven or eight, so I was late to the party, you could say. And then I continued building until two maybe nineteen ninety three or four, and then there was a good five to ten year gap. 
you could say, because I was working and there was a point where, you know, I was unemployed, from, went to school, um, you know, cutting corners and not wasting money and things like that. Um, I even stopped buying Gundam kits at the time. And then, uh, then I got back into it uh, after, you know, after 10 years of not doing anything. But yeah, so that's it, guys. I'm going to be calling it a day. I thank you all for watching me just hang around and build kits and talk and say bullshit and things like that. I thank you for watching. This was pretty much unscheduled, unplanned. I'm going to continue building my do my um, my dom, trying to convert it into the dom token. It's a lot of work, of course, a lot of work. But I hope to get it done soon and hopefully get it done before May 1st. It's already May. It's already April 4th. Happy Easter again to everyone who's watching. Um, I got to start pushing along, getting this kit done. I hate to send the mess email to to uh, Zach Aurelius, letting him know that I can't complete it in time. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue. I mean, once I start, I might as well finish it. And uh, I hope to have it get it. Hope to have it ready. Either either for May first, but definitely I'll have it for Mosquito Con. So I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. Thank you again. Happy Easter. Have a happy holidays. And what can I say? But stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You guys all have a great holiday.